Hey, welcome to my garage. My name is Paul, and today I'm going to solve a problem that I caused for myself a couple of years ago when I first got this drill press. The problem is that the table likes to tip. I'll take this little sacrificial piece off here. And the problem is that I did not securely tighten it to the table that came with it because I wanted a nice big wide table. I wasn't really sure how to secure it to the uh, manufactured metal piece. Uh, there's a million and one different videos on the, out there on how to make a drill press table, but they're all a little bit overcomplicated for someone who's brand new. And this was only like the second tool I ever bought when I wanted to try out woodworking. So here's the problem that I came across. Okay, so initially all I wanted the table to do was to sit on the manufactured metal table and not slip side to side or front to back. And so what I did, which wound up being a little bit more complicated than it needed to be, was I put this piece on the on the table and then traced out these lines and I wound up having to move it over a little bit and I just made these uh, these pieces that fit right into the slots there that are designed to hold uh, whatever you're working on or just to be workable but the problem is here's here's the issue so when I put that in I'm sure it doesn't move side to side or front to back and if I have a particularly long piece that I'm trying to drill into, and I'm trying to focus on the drilling, and let's say I'm holding my work over here, you can see that the table wants to tip. So unless I have a piece that's, you know, only about a foot wide or less, it wants to tip on me. So today is the day that we're finally going to secure it to the bottom. Now you can kind of see from this angle how things look from the bottom, and that there's really nothing securing it except for those uh, those, I don't know if you want to call them racks or whatever, just kind of sitting in those grooves, those long beams or whatever you want to call them. So today we're actually going to go through the very simplest way to secure this to the table. Alright, so I've always used a sacrificial piece. This one's pretty much had it, so I'll have to put another sacrificial piece on top. But that doesn't really matter for this project. I've got this main base plate here that still is really intact because I've always used a sacrificial piece to drill down into to reduce blah, that's a whole other video. So I think I'm gonna reuse this. The first step is gonna be, I think I'm gonna try to knock these off so that I can reuse this piece because other than these being on here, there's nothing wrong with this piece. It's still perfectly straight and um, I've got a, a little bit of hole here but that's the same hole that runs right through there. So the first thing we're gonna do is try to knock these off and even if it's not perfect on the bottom, as long as this top is still fairly nice, I'm still going to drill into the bottom. All right, let's see what we can do here. That's pretty easy. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot easier than I expected. I'm going to knock this off with my chisel here, nothing fancy. Let's, let's try it like this. And look at that. Now I heard, I remember my dad and my stepdad telling me when they were in high school, their shop teachers told them that when you glue two pieces of wood together, the wood will break before the glue joint breaks. And I suppose that's kind of what's happening here. But uh, man, this OSB or or not no OSB, um, or whatever you call this stuff, it's nice because it's nice and straight as long as you don't get it wet. But I suppose this is holding and it's the glue that's still under there. But we were able to just knock it away. So good for us in whatever case. Okay, so here's what I was thinking. Just drill some holes, one there, one there, one there, one there, through my bottom, and recess them in the top so that my my bolt and washer will just sit flush down in there. The problem is that this washer and the, the head of the nut is going to take up a good half of my material, if you can see that there. So I don't want to eat up half of that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece. This will cover up both of those. It's just a scrap piece. I'm going to put this in there and run it through there so that um, even though I don't have a whole lot of purchase there, I'm still going to have a lot of material to go through to clamp it on and go through so that the whole hold is not relying on just an eighth or, you know, or, or maybe a little bit more than that of material to hold the whole thing down if I'm pushing holes through it. Okay, so step one is to drill the holes through the back of these. Luckily, I can see where I had already drilled these holes before. 
or where I had put those brackets. Um, looks like I drew my lines wrong the first time. Again, it was only like my second or third woodworking project. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and drill straight through, you know, like maybe uh, half an inch away from that end, half an inch away from this end. Same over here, then I can transfer those holes and go right up through here. So I put a drill bit on, which is just a little bit wider, a Forstner bit a little bit wider than what my, um, what my washer is. And I'm just going to go ahead and go all the way through because I'm already going to have a backer board underneath it. And so the weird thing is, a little trick if you haven't heard before, is that if you want to make sure to reduce uh, the blowout on the other side, you want to have a, um, a sacrificial board. It's just kind of weird for me because this has always been my top piece and this has always sat on top. So now I have to reverse that and put this underneath and uh, we're going to go ahead and drill. All right, nice clean hole on the other side you can see. Gotta love Forstner bits. Say they're super expensive, but the truth is you don't have to spend a ton of money on them. I bought a whole set from the old uh, Harbor Freights, and uh, they've served me pretty well so far. So now, all we gotta do is flip this guy back over, make sure our holes line up, which they do with plenty of room to spare. Okay, we are in, we're looking like we're in good shape, and let's just throw a washer on there and make sure that's happy to fit in there. Yep, absolutely. All right, so the next step is to put our backer board on the bottom. I think I'm gonna just put some short wood screws on there and then uh, drill some holes in the bottom plate that are only as wide as this bolt. Step one, we don't want to drill into the top because we're going to have boards and all kinds of our work working on this side, so we want to drill in from the bottom. So I'm going to take this piece, just kind of center it over where we're working. What I'm going to do is kind of put a couple of pieces here and there. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do Two on the outside, two in the middle, and two on the edges. Actually, you know, that's, I, I think that's going to work. So what I learned was to always drill pilot holes. Even if it's a little bit paranoid, the guy who taught me most of my woodworking was, he always said, drill pilot holes in everything, just to be sure that your wood's not going to split. With this kind of material, I don't really think it's going to, but I'm going to do it just in case. I decided since I have six holes to do, what I think I'm going to do to do myself a favor is going to be to clamp these two pieces together. And if there's anything that I've learned from mistakes in woodworking is that just take the time and do yourself a favor. If you ever see something that goes where you think, well, that might make my life a little bit easier down the road, trust me, future you will always thank past you for doing yourself a favor. Okay, so now I've got these so I can drill all six holes and they're always gonna be aligned. Let's get going. Now it really doesn't matter that I'm going all the way through on these because on the top side, they're just gonna be holes. And as long as I, if there's any kind of blowout, all you gotta do is clean it up with sandpaper. It's still gonna be a, a nice clean surface. So it's easier than putting a flag on my drill bit and all that stuff, so we're okay. Okay, so now I've got six holes. If you remember, my uh, my beams or whatever you want to call them are basically where these clamps are. So I've got two that are on the outside and one that's on the inside, so I'm gonna have a nice firm connection between this board and this. Since I'm gonna be using these countersink screws, I'm gonna go ahead and use my countersink bit and just give myself a little bit. It doesn't, doesn't really matter because they're going to be not showing. They're going to be on the bottom side. But they give me a little more peace of mind. 
All right. So a countersink bit is something really cheap. You can pick them up for a couple couple of bucks or order them online. They just kind of look like this. Uh, it's just to kind of even out this area where my countersink screw is going to go. And what that'll do is, the lesson I learned the hard way was that if you're drilling into something, and even if you do a pilot hole, and then you and you're like, all right, everything's going great, and then you get to this part where it kind of mushrooms out on the on the screw. Well, then that's forcing the wood apart. So that's why you want to put some countersink uh, recesses in there so that you don't mess up your work. I had a little bit of material left here that's going to make my table not sit perfectly flat and not perfectly perpendicular to where the drill press comes down and, and contacts the material. Now I'm going to go back and sand these down and then all I got to do is line these holes back up with what I did before. I do notice that I have a little bit of tear out on the back side of these, so I'm going to go ahead and sand those out too. Okay, so now we have to go back and put our screws back in. The nice little trick that I found is if you take the drill bit that you used for your pilot holes, that's obviously going to fit right through. So you go ahead and put this through and find your other hole. Line up the two pieces. There you go. And all you need is one other point. Because if you think about it, right now you've got a pivot, right? So if you put another hole in another point, so this is just a little Allen wrench that's this size or smaller, put another Allen wrench in there. Now all of these other points are going to line up. So now all I have to do is drive these right back through. Okay, now that I've got these other points in, obviously I can go ahead and pull these out. And these are going to be locked in place, aligned perfectly. Next, we got to flip this over, and we need, oh look, we got a little bit of tear out here. Let's just sand that down. See, this is from the screws pushing up. I know that they're not long enough to get through the whole material, but it was pushing, and so I'm going to have to go ahead and sand that down. Up next, we need to find the center of these holes so that we can put our bolts through them and uh, go ahead and secure this to the bottom. So again, this is the top. So we're gonna drill a smaller hole through this bottom piece that we just attached on the bottom. And that hole's only gonna be big enough to fit this, uh, this bolt. So there are these things that are called dowel centering jig, dowel centering punches or whatever you call them. But the thing is, my biggest one is not big enough. And I haven't dropped the money on a big one yet, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and eyeball the middle of these. And again, our holes were a little bit bigger, just a tad bigger than what our washers are. So we have a little bit of grace there. I'm still a beginner, so I like to build in a little bit of grace in my builds. So this is just an awl or an ice pick or whatever you might want to call it. Uh, got it from my grandfather in his old toolbox so all I'm gonna do is punch some holes here to give myself a guide and now we have all four now I just need to find a drill bit that is the size of this bolt plus the uh, the threads there too very cool that you can use a drill press to build tools for a drill press now all I have to do is line up these holes and drill straight down through those all holes that I made. I'm gonna have a hole through the bottom side. Again, I have my sacrificial piece underneath. Just make sure that our hole lines up nice and square. And here we go. The next step is I'm gonna drop this down with the uh, with the washer on. Drop it down into our nice little recess there. Line everything up into our holes. Okay, that's all snug. Now I'm just gonna mark, I'm gonna give myself a little bit of space here and mark where I need to cut that bolt off. Now I'll take something, anything that you know to be straight. Here's our one that we marked. Now let's take even just this box. It's the box of the nuts. 
line these up and now transfer our mark and we know that we gave ourselves plenty of grace so that's the spot where we need to cut all of these when I have these bolts that I've cut off and they don't look super pretty here uh, there is a solution for that what this does is that you put your bolt in here and run, put this in your drill bit and it'll just grind off all that nastiness and so that's what we're gonna do next our 5 16 bolts that we bought from Home Depot are half inch so we're gonna fit it on there make sure that as we tighten this way it's not gonna uh, strip out or it's not gonna go backwards in our ratchet put this on here tighten up oh I lost one Throw this on there. Now it's sheared off all those burrs that we had. And so now our nut's gonna go on there nice and smooth, even though that's not super pretty. The only thing that the, the nut carries about is that the, these uh, threads are nice and clean. So we're gonna do that for the rest of these. Okay, so now that we've done that, we just take one of our nuts and we just make sure that it threads on there happily and look at that it doesn't there's no burrs for it to worry about so we're good to go let's go ahead and start assembling just got to make sure that our lines holes are lined up throw a washer on the top and drop each one down i'm going to throw a half inch socket on the top I've got a half inch box end for the bottom and that's all there is to it now I've got a nice solid table that doesn't wobble on me anymore I've got this same long piece of walnut even if I'm sitting way over all the way out here, I'm not worried about my table wobbling on me. Now I know that I always have a perpendicular drill all the way through my material. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any tips on how I could have done this better, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.